Good evening, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 23rd, 2022, going on 8.40 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about this evening, including Tropical Depression 9 located in the Caribbean. It is expected to become a major hurricane over the next several days as it barrels towards Florida, so it's going to jump strength to everything. Taking a while to look across the Tropical Atlantic this evening as we are looking at the infrared satellite picture now. Uh, we have Tropical Depression 9 located in the central and eastern part of the Caribbean at this point, south of the Dominican Republic. So it'll be moving westward over the next couple of days and some uh, quite significant strengthening of the system is likely as it passes to the south of Jamaica. If we look at the visible satellite imagery this evening as the sun begins to set, we notice that a couple of things have happened this evening. Uh, first of all, we'll go back to the beginning of the frames we were talking about earlier this afternoon how most of the convection was not around this low level circulation, which is positioned right about here. It has actually changed a little bit today and we noticed that there's actually more convection over top, uh, very close to this low level circulation. And we see by the end of the frames here, we noticed that some of the deep convection popping off is pretty close uh, to the Western side of this uh, circulation at this point. So there is decreasing shear and that will be the trend for the next about 24 hours as shear begins to decrease. Now, ultimately, we can see that these storms are still getting pushed away from the circulation at this point, and we're not seeing a well-organized system. Nonetheless, though, it probably could be near tropical storm strength already. Unfortunately, we haven't had recon go in there because they've had some mechanical issues, and of course, they cannot fly around in the storm safely. Um, so they have returned back to base, and we should get another recon plane in there later this evening to sample the environment. Now, the official track forecast here as of 5 p.m. this evening does have this becoming a uh, tropical storm IAN within the next about 12 hours. Uh, this is expected to remain pretty flat with intensity for about the next 36 hours before intensifying. We do have a tropical storm watch that has been issued for the island of Jamaica because tropical storm conditions are possible within about 48 hours. Then we also have a hurricane watch for the Cayman Islands, which is hard to see on here, uh, but the Cayman Islands are located right in about here. We do have a hurricane watch that has been issued for those areas, as this is expected to be near or at hurricane intensity and rapidly intensifying as this crosses Cuba and towards the Florida Peninsula. The end of this forecast track is very uncertain. There's a lot of uncertainty in terms of what's going to happen, so let's go ahead and look at all that. In the intensity department, first of all, this is the 18Z H war forecast here. This is valid for uh, 5 p.m. this evening. I'll run this out here a little bit in time. We notice that again, for the most part, we're still going to be dealing with some shear over top of uh, this system for the next couple of days. Again, that uh, wind coming from Fiona's outflow and an upper level ridge. This begins to change though and decides to eventually make its way towards the north and west as we start to interact with an upper level low that's sitting right here. And that's going to begin to erode the ridge that's kind of been positioned out here and allow our storm to gain a little bit of latitude. And then this begins to start rapidly intensifying as the upper level environment remains quite favorable for significant strengthening. We have upper level divergence aided uh, by an approaching trough that is uh, approaching the Northern US and so that will create a favorable interaction for uh, intensification as this begins to move towards the north and west here. And so we notice here by about uh, 78 hours from now, we could end up with a storm uh, that is close to the western part of Cuba. There's a little bit of uncertainty in this track forecast here, depending on the launching point of our system. Uh, and because that we still may have additional down shear reformations that occur within the storm, we might end up dealing with a storm that actually dips southward for a bit. We can kind of see how this moves almost due southwesterly for a while and then begins to move towards the northwest as it erodes, uh, as the ridge erodes and this begins to interact with that trough. And so this is a possibility that changes the track forecast because even a little bit more of a storm that decides to track northward begins on that track towards the northwest and then recurves towards the Florida Peninsula, similar to the official forecast in the European forecast. Uh, the HMON, for example, here, this is a hurricane-specific model. Again, develops this into a hurricane on the western part of Cuba, crosses, and this is still intensifying, 
And then we end up with a storm that would be moving into the Florida Big Bend region, uh, pretty close to the northern part of the Tampa Bay suburbs at this point, uh, kind of the outer, you know, metro region. Um, but, you know, this would be just about at this point, about 70, 80 miles south of, uh, to the, well, really to the northwest of Tampa. And this would be a very big problem, even though this would be weakening on approach, which is a probable solution for the far northern tracks. This would be something that has to be monitored. And of course, the Florida Big Bend region, anywhere from about Cedar Key, uh, maybe even Tallahassee southward to Dayton Collier counties need to be monitoring this and preparing for a potential hurricane impact sometime next week. Um, now, the official um, guidance here does continue to indicate a more western shift today in the modeling. You can see the official NHC forecast is way off uh, from some of the other deterministic runs here. These are the deterministic, not the ensembles. Um, but all of the deterministic runs are more into the Florida panhandle uh, than what we were seeing yesterday. And a large part of that is what happens with this trough over the uh, contiguous U.S. If we actually look here, we notice that we have a trough digging in uh, within about 84 hours from now and our storm begins to approach. And the shape of this trough is going to matter because we notice that we have a trough here that usually would just be moving straight eastward. But we have a very strong back side of this trough that also tries to dig in. And we noticed that in the European forecast, this digging of the second part of this trough actually captures TD9 and it forces it inland across South Florida and then eventually tries to phase with it, um, similar to Fiona, what Fiona's interaction is right now. So this is very complex and this is the same type of uncertainty that we had with Fiona. Um, so the upper level pattern is not quite there yet in terms of the certainty. Um, however, what we do know is that, again, we're going to have a storm lifting northward uh, in the you know, Caribbean at some point. Uh, but whether it's over here towards the western tip of Cuba or whether it's you know, over kind of the center line here remains to be seen. Uh, the multimodal ensemble guidance at this point continues to indicate, again, a large spread within just about five days. Uh, this is day five, and we notice that there's a large pool of uncertainty here from... Uh, over the Florida Peninsula to east of Florida to over the Yucatan Peninsula. And theoretically, these far left and right outliers are still at play. Uh, but the most of the consensus begins to indicate that some type of impact to Florida will begin sometime early to mid next week. We could be talking about a major hurricane landfall somewhere in the Florida Peninsula or the Panhandle. So it is important to kind of take your hurricane preparedness plan seriously. And of course, if you live in Jamaica, you know, uh, the Cayman Islands and Cuba, uh, you're at the most risk immediately. So it is important and imperative that you pay attention to the forecast and go ahead and start preparing. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more later tomorrow.